Okay. Welcome back to my let's play of Gloomhaven the Crimson Scales on Tabletop Simulator. What very may well be the last video of this series. As we have two scenarios left. And I sense that one of them is a boss scenario. But it's a, a linked one, so we don't have to do any events or go back to town or do anything like that. So let's just uh, fire it up. Undead Terrors. All right. Scenario is complete when the Shadow Demon and Twin Corpses are dead. You crawl through the narrow hole you formed from the previous chamber into yet another warren of vaults. The undead are on you immediately, but this feels different, almost like they are protecting something. You are on the right path. Tired but battle-ready from your previous ex exertions, you steal yourself for one more push. Time to get to the bottom of who or what is responsible for this necromancy. Alright, door two is locked until door one has been opened. We've got a stone golem in the corner over there and three living corpses over here. They all have ten health. Okay. I highly doubt battle goals matter too much. Let's see here. So we've got a possibility for a good spearing. Uh, but I'd have to move three. I don't have to go actually that fast. And in fact, it would behoove me to go slow. Uh, if I wanted to do a spearing, though, probably we're looking at uh, Rend and Mutilate. So I think that'll be one. And then a move three, maybe just a move two, but let's not fuck myself over. And here, um, we could follow it up with all sorts of things. Molecular Hydra Blast. Um, let's assume we won't need too much. Maybe just preliminary research to like finish them off, but we have to go slower than 74. Not happening. Shit. All right, then we'll soften them up. It's the slowest I can go. Here we go. All right. Stone Golem is just moving two. Bright Spark is going to move uh, here. Here. So that's there. And then I'm doing preliminary research. Hitting six and four in that order. Uh, ooh, I like that. So six got hit for two, four got hit for three, and we strengthen the Ruin Maw. That's very nice. <laughs> all right, the living corpses are all moving one. That's it. And now the Ruin Maw is going to be moving up. And this is an attack eight this is a really kind of dumb one to lose uh, um because the bottom is so good and we'll never get it back so i'm almost like debating now Yeah, it's too fucking good, man. 
too fucking good once you're sated. So I'm gonna swap this out. I know, I know, you're not supposed to do it. Uh, um, so I need a loss on here. Probably this. Okay. So we'll do this then. I moved three. I moved whatever. I get to add plus one attack to my next attack this round. And we're using this. So let's say it's an attack six against the guy in the back and an attack five uh, on the guy in front of me. All with advantage. Uh, okay, empower myself and plus two, so he's definitely dead. And then this is a five. Jen's a bean a six, and he's also dead because if he has two or less health, he's dead. And, uh, hold on. Took... Yeah, okay. There you go. And I'm sated. Done. Lose this. Now we want to go fast. Hit this guy pretty good with a good sated effect. Um... This would just do a guaranteed six damage. That's pretty good. Uh, that's pretty good. And follow it up. Do an attack two there. Uh, so then the bright spark mostly just wants to work on the stone golem. <sighs> yeah, I mean, if I had... Elements that would do something. I could go so late. Uh, I don't know. This is this was dumb. No, that's dumb. Don't do that. Forget I said it. Just do the attack five. And maybe an attack three. All right. Ruin Maw. Uh, uh, I'm going to move here. Get an XP. Do an attack two. Rupture. And then uh, get another XP. Wound him. And he takes six damage. Yeah. It's not amazing. I mean, he's not dead. Had we just done, like, uh, Fatal Frenzy, we probably would have done more than six damage. So in that case, eh, yeah. Saving that for the Stone Golem may have been a slightly better idea. But oh well. The bright spark. Um. Okay. Uh. Shit. That's range two. Damn. Damn. Why did I pick this? No, I'll just let the fucking Ruin Maw get hit once. So this is just an attack five against the Golem. Crit, 10 minus two is eight. Pretty good. So the corpse is just going to hit the Ruin Maw with a four, three damage. Stone Golem moves one. Done. I am not sated. Yeah, I'm not sated. So 
helmet don't matter too much. Um, get a solid hit in and then maybe pop that door open. And here, oh, I don't know. The fuddling serum. So make sure he dies. It's a ruin mod, just doing an attack four. Dead. Actually, I didn't even have to swing at him. I don't know what I'm thinking. And then move four. So that's my two. Oh boy, that's going to be a pain. Um, 32A. Bursting into the room, you see a large dark demon, his hands glowing green, coated with the new familiar liquid. He screams in disgusted recognition as he realizes you've come to thwart his plans before composing himself. You're too late, he taunts. My guards are in position. The undead army will soon be here. You can't destroy my work, and you can't destroy me. With a crazed look on his face, he and his minions launch themselves at you. He's immune to stun, disarm, mobilize, curse. Other than that, he's just a big, bad shadow night demon. Which, yeah, is a problem. The black imps curse a lot. I believe they they poison natively and they can curse. And the night demon, we gain disadvantage against him. He's got 26 health, so it's pretty shit. One, two, three, four. He'll move up to the door. Uh, they have range four. I'm just going to move two spaces back. Night demon. One, two, three, four. Um, that's it. Bright Spark is doing an attack four against the golem. Plus two. And I create any element. It's going to be light. Also get an XP and I move three. The imp. They're both moving one. One, two, three, four is not enough. That's that. That's that. Oh, for the ruin mom, I'm going to use a stamina potion. And I want to get back Indomitable Craving. Um, and this. So I need to get sated again. Probably Savage... I oh don't know, I'd have to kill something. Well, I'd have to come up with something to get invisible. Otherwise, just an attack eight, which is pretty good. Um... thinking I'm not going to have a bottom sated action to go with indomitable craving so I guess just go with this do this shit again the bright spark um gosh I don't know we have light I guess we probably want to use it So something with elevated chemicals. Yeah, I don't know. Night Demon's going first. He's moving here, he's swinging for four. Plus one is five damage. I could burn a card that way and become sated right now.
Which isn't a bad idea. I'd have to do the top of Ren and Mutilate in order to extend the Sated. <laughs> or I could just take five damage and not sweat it too much. All right, we'll just take the five for now. Okay, so the Ruin Maw is going to be doing the bottom of this top of this so that's an attack of nine and I gain advantage which just means it's a normal hit <sighs> okay interesting so he gets wounded and ruptured right there I do nine which puts him at 17 uh, I'm going to use the mana medicine. So I'm going to heal myself for five. I get to create any element. Which the bright spark will then be able to use on her turn. So that's good. And I am, of course, sated. Uh, the bright spark then is moving in. I'm going to be consuming two elements. He's immune to disarm, so that's useless. So we're just doing uh, an attack of six. Think I can poison him? Yep, I can poison him. Attack six with poison. Uh, but I do have disadvantage. Okay. Uh, it's ambiguous, so I take the first one I chose, which is a 7 hit. Brings him down to 10, and I shield the Ruin Maw for 1. That's it. Black Imps. This one gets to uh, hit both of us. So this is an attack of two on both of us with poisons, starting with the Ruin Maw. Uh, why did I roll tw Oh, Oh, well, yeah, I ruled, rolled both of them. Yes, I know what I'm doing. Uh, so that's just uh, one here and four here that poisons both of them. End. Okay. I had to lose one of those. Hold on. We are sated, uh, but I don't have a tremendous follow up, uh, especially because he already has wound and rupture. So doing indomitable craving now is a little unnecessary. I think we want to do fatal frenzy, even though I could do the bottom of indomitable craving so that I have normal rolls for the two Fatal Frenzies. He's at 10 with poison. That's probably enough to kill him. Let's try for that. Bright Spark then. We kind of want to get in there and work on these imps. Yep, so Ruin Maw... Gain advantage on all your attacks this round. Let's pivot around to here. And this is an attack four. Followed by an attack four. Very much dead. Get an XP for that. No longer sated. Dead. Okay. Okay. So, that was one of the things we have to kill. We also have to go after twin corpses. I wonder what that's going to be. Uh, the Bright Spark. Move here. 
and do an attack three, creating light against the elite. He gets attackers gain disadvantage. Damn. Okay. Um, well, it's a plus zero. I'd have to consume any element. I don't think I can consume something I just made, so... Technically, I don't think it even gets made until the end of my turn. So, I'm going to uh, disarm him. And just do a three. Not poison. Okay. Uh, so this other imp is still going to shoot us. We're both poisoned already, so this is a two attack. Ruin Maw gets one damage. Bright Spark gets two damage. Ouch. Guess we'll do that. Oh my gosh. I don't even keep track of this. I don't know how much I've moved since I started this. Uh, I don't know. It's probably done. And I just ignored it. All right. I'm going to short rest. No, that's the one I want. Okay. Let's see, how fast can I go? 20, no, a 17. Let's go for that. And do that. Fucking, oh, God, no, damn it. They're shielded. Okay, well, then I don't want to do Molecular Hydra Blast. Because, I guess, I mean, maybe I could, maybe we can get something. One, two, three. Actually, do I need to even walk in here? No. All right, so I'm doing Hydra Blast. I'm doing the Slug Crossbow. So this is an attack six on both of them. <laughs> yeah. Okay, starting with the elite. I can consume light, so that's a plus two, so that's an eight. Minus five is three. Okay, and then six on the other guy. Can't consume anything there, so it's just one. Not too fantastic. Ruin Maw is even more screwed. Sort of. I can do Ravenous Roar. Rupture, Rupture. Push, push. Each take a damage from that. Okay. Now I'm going to long rest on the Ruin Maw. And, um, boy, had I pushed him here, it would have worked out better. Let's pretend I did. Yeah, we fudge a lot. We fudge a lot on this shit. It probably doesn't make me a better player. All right, so the Bright Spark is doing an attack three against this thing. Dead. And then I'm doing an attack three with plus one range. To hit the other one. No. Hmm. Well, I guess that had to happen sometime. 
The imp is just gonna shoot the Ruin Maw with a three. Three. Ruin Maw removes that. And... Uh, has to burn a card. I don't know, probably... Reckless Attack. I really want to heal. Do some of that stuff. And the Bright Spark. I think I also want to heal. Okay. Oh, I really didn't think this through, did I? Well, no, I mean, I guess it's fine. Uh, so I'm moving here with this. I'm healing two, and then I'm just doing an attack to You're dead. Bright Spark, I'm just moving here and healing him for three. He's more important. Uh, you die. I could go get this chest. I mean, it's sitting right there, but... Uh, I don't know, man. Ah, uh, no, not, not really. I just want to keep going. So just tall ass. Move four. One, two, three, four. And uh, move four. One, two, three, four. Done and done. Yep, we're going to be getting another long rest in. Don't worry. Move three. One, two, three. And move two. Done. Uh, long rests. Do another move of two, three, three. Doesn't really matter. I'm not opening the door yet. And you lose poison. And we burn a card, which is going to be one of these attack threes, probably. Um, yeah, this. Now, long rest here. I could just heal myself for three. I think that's reasonable. I'm going to activate this again so that I can forget about it. Move up to here, heal myself for three, and Rune Maw heals for two. Done. And we lose yet another card. Um, probably Scrape and Scrounge. Even though that is. My only bottom loss. Oh no, there's Pouncing Predator, I guess.
but no, I think Feral Lunge top is pretty solid for an opener. Move three, jump, then attack four with advantage. Just nice kick the door in kind of action. This room should be small enough that I should be able to hit something. Otherwise, it really sucks. Maybe I have the Bright Spark go first. Uh, anyways... If I was going to open with the Bright Spark, we probably want Molecular Hydro Blast. Nope, wrong one. There you go. Then uh, we need to go after 40. That's fine. All right, so we got to move three. Oh, yeah. Very nice and tight. Tight, tight. You open the door to see a font containing the glowing green potion and associated ingredients and instructions. The shadow demon is dead, and this is what you came for. Guarding the font are two massive animated corpses, no doubt tasked with ensuring that none would leave with the potion alive. Knowing that, fatigued as you are, you must gain those instructions and destroy the potion and stand ready for one last stand. Okay, twin corpses, blah, blah, blah. Whenever a twin corpse is killed, summon four normal living corpses in unoccupied hexes nearest to the hex in which it was killed. Wow. Okay. Now, our goal is to kill both of these things. So I think what we want to do is kill them around the same time, ideally the same turn. They only have 13 health, but they do swing for five, which is quite a bit. Um... We're going to use this. They're not immune to anything. So we can even lay down a stun trap, which is nice. Uh, we're going to Hydro Blast. One. I don't think I actually needed to use... Well, hold on. He's going to move there. He's not going to move in. Uh, yeah, I guess we'll hit the one in the back. And we'll poison him just for fun. And we're going to be throwing down a stun trap uh, right in the doorway. So this is an attack five with poison against the one in the back here. Crit. Well, certainly makes for pretty easy going. Okay. <laughs> sure. Uh, the Ruin Maw. Oh, the Ruin Maw kind of fucks it up, doesn't he? Okay, don't put the Stun Trap. Well, no matter... Yeah, put the Stun Trap here. It's fine. Uh, the Ruin Maw is going to be leaping in. Doesn't really matter, I guess. And this is an attack four with advantage that's going to sate his thirst. Uh, plus one, so five damage. Then I'm going to do a bottom attack two. Go ahead and give it advantage, because why not? Uh, okay, so that was a heal oneself, empower self, and plus one, so three more damage. Empower myself. And an extra XP. Okay, living corpse. This one moves in, gets stunned. This one just swings at me for five. Hardy six damage there. End. Um, yeah, I think this is going to be pretty simple. I 
think we're going to get them both in one shot. And the... Something like that. All right, so the Ruin Maw is going to be moving here. And he's going to be getting an advantage on all his attacks this round. And then I'm doing an attack six on both of them. Uh, seven on the poison. Okay. So that's um, nine. Dead. And now this is a six on this other guy. Dead. All right. And the bummer is I'm not going to get this chest because it's just going to be clogged with living corpses. And the bright spark won't be able to actually get in there. No jump. Because... God. That's a lot. That's eight. Unoccupied hexes. I can't even spawn eight. There you go. That's what it would be. It's a lot. And um, they won't get a turn because they were summoned. I can move six, but yeah, I just can't jump over them. I can't get through, so I could actually move eight. Doesn't mean a thing. So unfortunately, it just worked out that way. Oh, well, that's it. Um, what did I miss out on? 38 was the war pick. And 17 was the concussion mine. Oh, concussion mine's good. What's the war pick do? During your melee attack ability, add Pierce 4 to one attack. As a one-handed, consumed melee weapon. It's not bad. It's not bad. I mean, it's one of those kind of conditional things. Where you look to see what monsters you're dealing with. Alright. You stand bloodied and battered. A pile of bones at your feet and the glowing font in front of you. Unsure how to dispose of the potion, you first carefully take a vial. Sheila will be interested in this, no doubt, before trying to work out how to destroy the rest. Eventually, you decide to dilute it with all the water you're carrying, hoping that its lack of potency will render it useless. On your last collective flask, the liquid loses the last of its luminescence, and you are sure you can hear it almost sigh as a small cloud of vapor floats upwards before the new, now virtually clear liquid is still. You have absolutely no plans to drink it, but it looks as though it has lost its potency. Gathering the papers detailing how to make the potion, you thoroughly destroy all entrances to the chamber to ensure nobody else stumbles across this catacomb of evil. You're making your way back to the guild hall, when Dominic's last words to you echo louder and louder in your head. Remember, destroy the potion. You must destroy it. With some regret, you pour away the vial you'd saved for Sheila, but then your eyes fall on the detailed instructions. What else had Dominic said? Don't let the potion fall into the wrong hands. Can you trust Salandra? But 70 gold each is a lot of money, and that's what you're here for. Well, it seems pretty clear-cut that this would be a bad idea, because they're trying to they're trying to remind you, like, hey, 70 bucks, right? I'm going to tell her it was destroyed. You tell Salandra the bad news, and she studies you for a long time. Finally, she says, well, there was always a chance that the thing that created this power would take the secrets with it to the grave. That was a tough mission, and thank you for taking it on. She walks away and is not seen for several days. You're unsure whether you made the right decision, but you feel that you've disappointed Salandra. We had 10 XP each. Had we chosen the other option, just in case you're curious, if you want to protect yourself from spoilers... Well, I don't know why you're watching this, so... Uh, we would have gained 70 gold. We would have gotten Take the Money. Uh, she pays you personally. She's overjoyed. And you're reminded that maybe you made a mistake. But you get 70 gold. 
Yeah, I think we made the right choice. We'll see. It's going to matter in the final scenario. All right, so um, scenario one. Did I use my equipped items a number of times equal to regret? No. Uh, that would have been fucking nine times. No, that didn't happen. Yeah, I gained fewer than seven XP. Seven or fewer. Actually, maybe. What's our bonus? Eight. So I only got three XP. So yeah, I got two check marks. Not that that matters. Um, yeah, still no level seven for the bright spark, so not a whole lot to say there, even with the plus ten. But that's okay. All right, let's let's finish it. Let's do it. I think we get a get a city encounter. During a visit to the old scales one morning, you overhear an argument between a harrower and a human outside a shop. The human is wearing exterminator apparel and is yelling various slurs at the harrower. Although you can't quite understand the harrower's response, the chitters and hisses are amplifying, and the harrower is growing angrier as the human continues on his rant. Uh, we'll intervene on behalf of the harrower. You intervene on behalf of the harrower and demand the human leave it alone. Outnumbered, the human curses under his breath as he turns around and enters the shop. The harrower chitters gleefully and explains that it belongs to a sect of medically inclined harrowers and is willing to aid you on your next journey. We're immune to muddle during the next scenario. Wow, sometimes that could just be insanely good and sometimes utterly useless, but okay. Yeah, it really feels like the whole thing is just designed for you to be good guys, you know? I don't know if base Gloomhaven is like that. I've never played as an evil campaign. I may have to do that on the digital version. All right. Last scenario, 32. Confronting the past. Uh, party achievement, take the money, incomplete. Look at all this. Oh boy. Oh, it links to Gloomhaven, so there's no road event. Jack Sarah, what the fuck? You step into the Crimson Scale and pause. Something is different. There's a tension in the air, as if battle lines have been drawn. Erok, the barman, a loose group of other mercenaries, and the singing Quatrel, of course, stand in a group facing you with Salandra at their head. You also notice Sankas cowering in the background. Hello, friends, purrs Salandra disingenuously. So glad you popped by. What's going on, you ask, confused. You came here for a drink, not a fight. You still don't get it, do you? Salandra says, the smile gone now. Do you really think I wanted you for your abilities? She laughs, as do her various cronies. I've spent the last six months trying to kill you off, though you've been very helpful to me. On senior confusion, she carries on. There were many threats to my domination of this town, and you've eliminated most of them, albeit mainly through good fortune and stupidity. Gaining the Orb of Embers and the Frosted Crystal for me, then using them to kill the Lava Light and the Icebound was very helpful, as was disrupting the Aether's attempt to bioengineer creatures to stop me. But best of all was your rescue of my friend Sankas here. His weaponry skills have been most useful. At this, one of Salandra's henchmen wheels out a fearsome-looking piece of artillery, glowing with the energy stone you rescued. Sankas looks distinctly ashamed and scuttles off out of sight. Still completely taken aback by what you thought was a business arrangement, you only managed to utter, What? Why? Why? answers Salandra incredulously. You mean you still don't get it? Look around. You and your predecessors have been responsible for the slaughter of innocents, our friends, our family. And now you get it. Now you understand. Now you recognize the resemblance, even before Salandra shakes down her red hair. Jack Sarah, you say, almost to yourself. Don't you mention my sister's name, Salandra screams in shock. It isn't just about her, although someone killed her, and I know you were associates of hers. 
We are the Crimson Scales, and we came together to wreak bloody justice for all the people you, self-appointed militia, have taken from us. Now we will have our revenge. Okay. So, had you taken the money, you would have skipped this first room? Well, damn. That seems like a good thing. Wait a, wait a minute. They didn't put the monsters here. There should be... Should be two living bones and an elite living bone. Okay, um, oh shit, I forgot to remove. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six guards, Jixera, the archers. I don't have the artillery, I have to redo this. It didn't put out all the right things. That's why I got bugged. Oh yeah, 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 that's why there's no skeletons. Okay, okay, okay. I don't know why when it you do like delete map or end scenario, you know, whatever. Like, I don't know why they can't get it to delete the creatures as well. There you go. That's more like it. All right, we're immune to muddle for whatever good that does us. Uh, I'm not even going to look at battle goals. I don't care. Not, not sweating it. Uh, okay. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. No spearing is going to happen. Range on that's just too small. I wouldn't be able to get all three. Okay, I mean, I'm debating whether I want to get stated or not. If I did, I mean, I have so few options that are great if I don't invite, if I'm not sated, you know? So, it's hard to say. Whereas, like, being sated and doing indomitable craving is just so fucking good here. Alright, uh, we may as well then. And the Bright Spark usually open with Molecular Hydra Blast. You can go fairly late, and I might be invisible, so I'll move back a little bit just in case. Molecular Hydro Blast and something late. This. Go. All right, so the Rune Maw is moving here. Any plus one attack and advantage on my next attack, and I'm doing Savage Stalker. It's an attack nine with advantage. I may as well do it on the, the elites and hope we kill him. Yep. Uh, not quite actually. Cause that's a 10 and he has one shield. So that really sucks.
It was probably a bit optimistic. Maybe I should have just killed off the normal living bones and been fine with it. But yeah, I am sated, but I'm about to get my shit wrecked. Because this is just going to be a three, a two, and a two. A three, a two, and a two. Okay, it basically averages out to a three, a two, and a two. So that's uh, seven damage. Ow. For the Bright Spark, uh, I could crossbow and we could actually kill off both of these things. I guess it's probably worth it. So that's a six attack against both of them, starting with the normal. Uh, I got no elements, so that's five damage. And then against the other one, dead. Now I get to make an element. That was very much overkill on that elite. Okay, okay, lost, discard. So now I want to do Indomitable Craving along with just some sort of attack. Alternatively, I could hope the Bright Spark cleans up both of them. And I could do like Heal 2, Empower, Empower. But no, better safe than sorry. Uh, for us, for the Bright Spark. Oh, I don't know. Something like this and this. So Ruin Maw is going to be just doing Indomitable Craving. Oh, yeah, he's wounded, so he's definitely dead. Whoops. Wound uh, Rupture. And then I am moving here and doing an attack of two. Wounded, also dead. No longer sated. Bright Spark doesn't have to kill shit. I guess I'm just moving two and whatever. They both die. Okay, good. Problem solved. So now, uh, we want to do move two, disarm adjacent trap, heal two, and then I get to empower myself because I disarmed it. And we'll heal myself for two. And then the bright spark will be healing and just moving in. So heal for three. Move here. And then, um, yep, move here. Disarm this damage trap. I mean, we could do that with some shenanigans, but there's always so much range. It never really works out too well. It's only five damage. So I get to heal myself for two, power myself, and then I get to heal myself for another two, back to full. All right, um, let's move four and attack within three. Here we'll go late, move four and maybe rupture push or I don't know, I guess we'll read the room. So, uh, move four, starting with two of it. Hot diggity dog. Uh, 35A. Oh, okay. We get to recover a lost card. Uh, well, that doesn't matter for the bright spark, but hey, we get Savage Stalker back. That's awesome. So the bodyguards there is a boss. He gets to, oh God. Move minus one, attack minus one. 
focusing on a new target until there's no new targets. Special two moves, zero attack, zero, then retaliate to shield to self and all Inox allies. And if there's no other Inox alive, summon an archer and a guard. Yikes. We'll probably want to leave one alive then. He's also immune to disarm, poison, muddle, chill, stun. He can be wounded and ruptured, so that's good. Okay, uh, boy, it looks like a painful room to walk into. I'm not going to lie. So he's doing his special two. Uh, which means that they will all get retaliate to shield two this turn. He's also moving three, so he'll be here. Uh, the guards. Who, yeah, the guards will be able to. Guard will be able to shoot me for three. The archers will have range four. So I'd have to go like here with the hawk helm in order to shoot the guard for three. I guess. Okay, that's pretty solid. Down to six, and I create any element I want. Guard is moving two, attacking for two. I could disarm him as well. May as well. May as well. Okay, that's the bright spark done. Um, the bodyguard is doing as he said. And then moving here. Yes, come to me. Come to me. The guard is just moving to, to there. The Ruin Maw. Um... So I could do the bottom of Pouncing Predator. It would get me right next to the bodyguard. He'd gain wound rupture and take three damage without any sort of retaliation on my part. That's pretty solid. And that gets us sated. I think that's what we want to do. So three damage, wound, uh, and rupture. Gain two XP and become sated. That does mean the archers are now going to pelt me, which really sucks. But we're trying to burn down this bodyguard quick. He does have shield two, which is pretty shitty, and the retaliate two. But yeah, I mean, attack four advantage is pretty solid. I guess let's just go for it. All right, we got rid of our curse, our, our null there. So five minus two is three. Down to 14 and I take two. I also wound myself. I could prevent it though. Yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and prevent it because I don't know. I guess I'd probably heal from the potion anyways, but. Uh, you're right, you're right, you're right, you're right. Just take the wounded. Okay, the archers then. They're both shooting me for four. Seven damage. Ow. And that's it. But I'm next to him now and I'm sated. Do I want to use a stamina potion then as well? Something to really work the satedness. Uh... This would give me advantage on all my attacks. With Fatal Frenzy, that's a pretty powerful combo. So I think we want to grab that. And the other card doesn't matter too much. Usually Ren and Mutilate, I like to have. We'll go with that. Okay, we're all clear. Good. So we're doing Indomitable Craving, Fatal Frenzy. Here we're gonna do 
could do frozen explosion, but I don't know where it would work. I guess I could do it right here. Okay, try it. We want this bodyguard dead real quick. The archers are shooting the Ruin Maw for two each. Jesus Christ. That's really bad. So that's four plus three is seven. I'll die from wound. So I have to sh lose a card to shrug off the four. Oh gosh, I guess this. I become sated again, which is nice, but I still take the three. Uh, Bright Spark's gonna move here. Been frozen explosion. It's a three to both of them. Yep, sure is. All right, three on the guard. And three on the bodyguard. Ooh, okay. So that's um, this. And then that's this. And I strengthen an ally. I wish it was a heal. Okay, that's it. The Ruin Maw takes the damage from his wound, and then I'm definitely using this potion. And I create an element. Doesn't really matter. So now, uh, I already have advantage on all my attacks. But... You know, I think the attack threes are still better than just doing six damage. So here you go, buddy, an attack three on your ass. It's got an attack two plus. What does that mean? Oh, two plus two. Oh, it's an attack four. Yeah, I feel like you could just write that, but all right. All right, so we've got... a one, and then a one, push one, wound. Doesn't really matter which one I take, it's just a plus one, so four damage. And then another one, that's five damage, and he will be dead, thank God. Uh, I could move and let the Bright Spark take a hit, which probably appeals to me. So the guard is just going to swing at the Bright Spark for two, one damage, and the bodyguard dies. Good. Oh, boy. Hope that last room is not too much of a doozy. It is the last scenario of the campaign, so I guess. I guess. Um, so I think I extended my sated. Yeah, I did. So that's good. Well, no, I, I, I wouldn't. Either way, it was the end of my next turn. Oh, damn it. Damn it. Okay. Um... I really don't want to lose another card at this point. Even though we have two archers to deal with. I mean, I did get a card back. And doing an attack eight on them is on both of them is pretty appealing. 
We could kind of just wrap up this room before I take gobs more damage. So, yeah, you're probably right. Uh, for the bright spark. I don't know. She can probably tank this guard a bit more. So, long rest. Okay, the Ruin Maw is moving four. And now this is an attack eight on both of them. I do lose the bottom of Ren and Mutilate, which is a bummer, but this is my best bet. Uh, I'm going to gain advantage on one of them. Yeah, the one in the back. So that's an attack eight with advantage on the one in the back. That's eight with a wound, which is good enough for me. And then just an eight on this one, plus one, dead. Yeah, I mean, it's times like that where it's just like, yeah, losing a card is kind of worth it. The archer dies. Guard swings for three. Crit. Well, that's not fun. And I get two back. And I get this back, and we lose a card. Oh, boy. Probably this. Okay, okay. Lost, discarded. Um, I'm sated. But I think I'd rather long rest... I don't, yeah, yeah. Bright Spark will finish this. I'm just going to do an attack four muddle on him. Dead. And then move three. Yeah. Okay. Get this back. You have to lose another card. Uh, okay. Okay, okay. So we want to do scrape and scrounge, disarm one of these traps, and then just some sort of movement along with it. And then the Bright Spark, we want to heal the Ruin Maw even more. Basically, just move here. Disarm this. Heal for two. And empower myself. Bright Spark. Move here and heal for three okay all right we're okay we're okay we're okay the final the final room very intense we probably want to be sated i don't know i guess we'll Read the room as usual, so the bright spark will pop the door open. Molecular Hydroblast, I think, is a solid choice. So this is a move three we've got. I'll have one extra move. Oh my god, 999 can't be targeted. Oh my lord. The Ancient Artillery has no hit points and cannot be targeted by enemies and does not draw from its monster ability deck. Jexera is Salandra. <laughs> it's immune to all negative conditions. Fuck, why? Why is she so good? So she moves towards the artillery, does move to push to all enemies within range two, and then attack plus zero target all enemies within range. 
Special two, she heals for three. And then the Ancient Artillery performs attack plus zero, target all adjacent enemies, attack plus X within range or two, where X is the number of hexes between the artillery and the target. Each time Solange performs an attack ability, the Ancient Artillery performs the same ability immediately after her. Okay, and it has an attack value of question mark. Question mark. Well, I don't know what that means. Uh, should I assume it's the same value as her? I guess I'll go under that assumption. Um, I don't know. I didn't get a stat card for it, so I have no idea. But, yeah. So she's going to be doing that special. So she'll be healing for two. Healing for three. Uh, we don't want to be next to the artillery. Um, I couldn't hit her even if I was next spot in that next spot. I guess I'll just move back and that's my turn. Great. Uh, the Jexera, Salandra, Eels, the Ancient Artillery, within range two, which is nothing. I guess that's her whole turn. That doesn't seem very impressive for the final boss. The Ruin Maw, however, this is where it gets a little trickier. If I want to get up there... One, two, three... Four, no. I have wing boots. That's useless. So I think we're not burning anything. I just am doing one, two, three, four. And we sit. Not very impressive turn. For anybody. No one is impressed by this. Okay. Uh, but now we can get a little bit more exciting. Uh, slightly. Yes. Uh, move three. Does that do it for me? It does. Perfect. Okay, good. What is B? Oh. Special one, she just moves towards B? Okay, great. Alright, so the Ruin Maw. Here we go. We move three. We get advantage on our attacks. I'm doing an attack eight against it. Against her. And that's all she wrote. Nine damage. Puts her at 15 already. And I become sated. Okay. <clears throat> Bright Spark is moving four. One, two, three, four. Attacking for three on Salandra. Plus two. Down to ten already. Yeah, I mean, this is definitely not an epic... We're playing on easy. Yeah, 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 I know. All right, her special one, she's trying to move towards the B-Hex. The Ancient Artillery then moves to, pushes all enemies within range to... So she goes, like, here. <laughs> Not very good for her. Uh, this thing... I don't even know its range. I have no stat block for this thing. You know? I think its range is probably a 4 or 5. So I don't think it even has to move to hit everybody. Um, It's pushing to... This can't be pushed. He could be pushed, but then why would he do that? Oh, it's a push to... Within range to... Okay, no. He wouldn't get pushed. So it's just an attack four on both of them. That's what I'm saying. I mean, I don't have any other info to go on. So attack four on the Bright Spark. Four. 
Attack four on the Ruin Maw. Crit. I don't even care. I don't even care. All right, lost, discarded. Short rest on the Ruin Maw. Fine. All right. Uh, definitely Fatal Frenzy. And then probably do this, just get advantage on everything. I like that. And then for here, short rest as well. No, that's the one I actually wanted. I'm going to be crazy and take a damage. Well, wait, why would I do that one? Don't do that one. All right, Bright Sparks going first. There's an attack six. Pretty simple. Put you down to three. Jack Sarah goes, does her special two. So she heals for three. I won't save you. Uh, um, then it doesn't attack. Oh, attack range two or higher. I fucked up there. Where X is the number of hexes between the artillery and the target. All right, so this is going to be an attack six on the bright spark based on my numbers. And then one, two, three, four. It's an attack eight on the rune maw. So six, seven damage. We got to lose a card. That's fine. And eight against the rune maw. Seven. Perfect. <laughs> All right, then the Rune Maw gets advantage and does two attack threes. Uh, okay, so that's three. And that would be, I don't know, four. It's dead. She's dead. She's dead. Simple. Yeah, pretty simple. I mean, no matter what, no matter what difficulty or player count, it's always just these two in here. I think they really need to include a stat block for the artillery for this to be crazy. But yeah. Having fought for your life, you managed to overpower the last of Salandra's horde. You have mixed feelings. It felt good to be in an elite group of mercenaries, and now it turns out it was a trick all along. Still, as the last one standing, you must be the elite, the best of the best, though your aching bodies disagree. Despite seemingly inheriting a bar of your own, which you now embarrassingly see was called the Crimson Scales all along, you know where you're going. First, you carefully pack the Frosted Crystal, the Orb of Embers, and the Book of Nika and drop them at the Sanctuary, asking Athan Traden to act as custodian of these precious but dangerous artifacts. Then you walk out of the door and cross the road. There's a dark corner of the Sleeping Lion with your name on it. Read 75. Uh, okay. Oh, page 75. Congratulations on beating the main campaign. For your reward, visit crimsonscales.com slash endgame. Password water hydra. Are you excited? Uh, the crimson scales. Congratulations. Thank you for playing through the Crimson Scales. I sincerely hope that your journey throughout was as enjoyable to play as it was for me to create it. And then there's a feedback form. Well, what was the password for? Oh, I assume this QR code just takes you to that site. But there you have it. That was uh, Crimson Scales. Sort of. I mean, yeah, we played with two players, solo, on easy. It wasn't really, like, the intended experience, I don't think. We fudged a lot of stuff, but we had a lot of fun. Or at least I had a lot of fun. Some very awesome classes that they've designed that I'd love to have uh, in physical form. Um, you know, the actual scenario design was mostly similar to everything you see in Gloomhaven. Um... Frosthaven, I think, gets a lot wilder with its scenario design with, like, different objectives, where often this was just, like, kill everything, 
Yeah, just just go through the kill it, kill kill everything. Just kill it all. Um but you know, I think if you like Gloomhaven, you played all the way through Gloomhaven, you're going to like the Crimson Scales. I mean, it's just it's just more of the same. It's a big just kind of expansion and it's good. I really like I said, I enjoyed it. Um we certainly didn't get to all the classes. Um but like I said, I'd like to maybe play it with someone else or some other people someday so I could play some other classes and do that kind of stuff. I honestly I would be fine playing the Star Slinger again. I really like that class. Uh um but yeah, there was some others. There were some others that I looked at uh like the Beetle uh, if you want a spoiler, this is the Amber Aegis. It's a giant uh, bug creature. And it, like, creates little bug hives that give buffs to anyone standing next to them. Um, so that's pretty cool. It's got a lot of retaliate, a lot of shielding. It's a massive tank. Um, I don't know. That may have been all I looked at. Because I was just like, fuck it, I'm going to look at the beetle. Um, but yeah, there was the Tusks one we never played. That was another starter that we didn't get to play with. There was the Void thing. And yeah, there's just a lot of cool stuff. And again, this was all just free as part of owning Tabletop Simulator. You can play all of it. It's awesome. Um, you know, huge props for all the scripting work they've done because Tabletop Simulator, when it came out, you know, years back, there was no scripting. So it was kind of a pain in the You had to do everything. You do everything. I would never want to play Gloomhaven on here. Um, because you just would have to do everything yourself. And it's, yeah, I guess slightly easier than playing it physically, but yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a lot better now. All right, so that's, uh, that's it. Uh, obviously we didn't do loads of scenarios we didn't do any solo solo quests there was a bunch of sides we didn't do and a bunch of event quests we didn't do um, personal quest chains we didn't do and then there's the whole trail of ashes the expansion to the expansion that has its own scenario chart um not much here i mean there's obviously only like five main quests there six sides a personal one and then the solo quests it's not a huge it's a kind of a mini expansion but yeah great stuff gloomhaven's almost certainly my favorite solo game of all time and one of my favorite board games of all time it's just a lot of fun for someone that likes tactical strategy it's really pretty top tier stuff so I think this is probably all you're going to see from me for Gloomhaven for a while uh, or any Gloomhaven related content. I think the next time you're going to see it from me is when Frosthaven comes to either the digital or TTS. Uh, so we can do a Frosthaven playthrough, which is going to be a whole big, big ordeal. But for now, my name is Mang. The game you just finished watching is Gloomhaven The Crimson Scales. And I'll see you fine folks around.